Hi friends, I'm Abby from Abby's Bookish Life and today we will be talking about the books that I read for the month of May. Now, in the month of May, I read 17 books. This consisted of 6 ebooks, 5 audiobooks, and 6 physical books. And throughout all of this, I had 2 2 star books, 4 3 star books, 6 4 star books, and 5 5 star books. So overall, it was kind of across the board, um, but I did end up with five five-star books, some of which were new favorites for me. So let's get into talking about them because there are a lot of books. The first book that I read this month was A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole, and I read this in an ebook. I gave this book two stars. Now this is a classic um, satirical comedy novel about a character named Ignatius who's a 30 year old man who lives with his mother in New Orleans and there are a lot of other subplots and side characters going on all of which are creating some kind of satirical commentary on something in society or some aspect of those characters and overall it follows Ignatius who after a series of misfortunes with his mom ends up having to get a job to start paying for his way of life and he hates finding a job and it follows all of the adventures he goes on. Now I gave this book two stars because I just didn't like the characters, really any of them. And I'm not going to talk too much about what I thought about this book because it is a book from my real life book club that I'm a part of and so I'm going to leave the in-depth discussions for the real life book club. But Overall, I just didn't like the characters, and because I didn't like them, I didn't care about what happened to them, and that's a really frustrating feeling to have while reading a book. The second book that I read this month was Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh, and I read this again as an ebook. It is a humor, nonfiction, memoir type story about Ali Brosh, the author, and her growing up, her finding love, her kind of as an adult not really knowing what she's doing and kind of making a point about how nobody really knows what they're doing. So overall, I thought it was very interesting. It had a mixed media type story to it where it had sections of drawings or comic book style commentary followed by a paragraph that elaborated on the story and it really elevated the story for me. I read it very quickly and if you ask my husband I laughed pretty much at every story. It was very funny, it was very relatable especially for adults who are new adults and are still figuring out life as a grown adult who has to make decisions for themselves. It was definitely very interesting and I highly recommend it. I ended up giving it four stars so it was great. The next book I read was Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness by Susanna Cahalan, and I listened to this on an audiobook. So this story is the memoir of the author, Susanna Cahalan, and so it starts with her living her life. She has a great boyfriend, she has a flourishing career as a journalist in New York, and it follows her life from that point through where she suddenly starts becoming very aggressive, very hurtful to her loved ones. She starts doing things that she doesn't feel like she would normally do, like missing meetings and missing deadlines. And that leads her to the discovery and diagnosis of some kind of disorder that they're struggling to figure out. And in the process of that, she misses a month of time. She can't remember it even now. So the book is really interesting because that section of the book is written by her, but it, our memories collected from her dad, her mother, her boyfriend, the videos from the hospital or the doctor's office that she was staying in at the time, and it is kind of her way of piecing together what happened, and then it follows the aftermath of what happened when she suddenly started to remember what was going on in her life. Overall, I gave it four stars. It was a very engaging, it was very interesting, especially if you are interested in psychology or kind of medical anomaly stuff. It was very, very interesting. The only reason it didn't get five stars is because Sometimes it got a little too medical for me. It was very um, medical term heavy, which is great as I was exploring different ideas and exploring what could possibly be her diagnosis, but it just felt very medical talk heavy at some points and it 
did take a while to get through just because of that. So that's the only reason I gave it four stars instead of five stars, but I still would highly recommend it. It was great. Next this month, I read All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood, and I read the physical copy of this. This book is a controversial contemporary fiction romance between an older man, Kellen, and a younger girl, Wavy. Now this book is already considered a taboo romance because the story starts with Wavy as a five-year-old and Kellen as an 18-year-old. Nothing overtly romantic really happens until Wavy is 13 and Kellen is 26 but it's still a very taboo romance. Now, both of these characters come from extremely abusive and problematic childhoods and families, and there's a lot of drug use involved with the parents and a lot of violence, all of those kind of things. So the story is told like they save each other and they are there for each other when the other person needs it. I gave this book probably a controversial rating, three stars. It was written beautifully. I love the structure of it. I love the different points of views. I love the short chapters. I loved the storytelling of it. It was beautifully written. I read through it so quickly and I wanted to know what happened. It was hard to put it down. The reason that I had to give it three stars instead of something higher than that is that the age difference in the romance was just so uncomfortable and hard to read about especially as a school counselor that age difference really was difficult and not pleasant and I know a lot of people a lot of booktubers who have read this book say that you should give it a chance because they're both broken and it makes you think about things in a different way I just, at no point was I supporting their relationship or did I want their relationship to happen. And there's a character in the book who is kind of the naysayer of the group, of the book, who says like, I don't think this is right and really fights hard for it to not happen. And I found myself siding with that character even though I think that the author wanted us to side with the couple. Overall, it was a beautifully written book. I know that it's really popular and that other people are able to see past the age difference, so maybe you would be too. It was just really hard for me to read and I didn't enjoy reading about it and I didn't want them to end up together. So it kind of defeated the purpose of the book for me. So overall, great writing style, not for me. The next book I read this month was All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen and I read this in an ebook. So this is a fictional contemporary chiclet romance kind of I guess and it follows Nina who is Finch's mom and it follows Tom who is Lila's mom so you have kind of like a parents telling their side of the story and Lila and Finch get some time to tell their story as well it follows a situation involving Lila so Tom's daughter who has an inappropriate picture taken of her at a party and it kind of follows the process that the school goes through, that the families go through to find a solution and to figure out the situation and find out what really happened. I gave this book three stars because I didn't like the characters. I loved Tom. He was the character that I supported the most, that I felt the most connected to and I felt like all the other characters in the book were making decisions that just didn't make sense and maybe it's because they have so much privilege and so much money that they can make these choices and the book is written I think to make a commentary about that but I just didn't like it and I didn't like the ending and I didn't like how privilege is used in the book and I wish that there had been more focus on discussing that privilege instead of just kind of brushing by it. Next I read Everybody Always by Bob Goff and I listened to this on the audiobook. So this book is a non-fiction self-help Christian book about learning to love everybody always, especially people who maybe get under our skin or who we don't agree with at all times, and learning how to be light in the world and bring positivity to the world even when other people are kind of making it feel like it's harder or like you shouldn't or like you aren't supposed to love that person. And it focuses on teaching you how to find peace and love in yourself so that you can show that to other people. 
I ended up giving this book four stars. It was very interesting. It had a lot of cool stories with interesting morals in them, and it just felt helpful to me and gave me some new ideas and was inspiring to me and it just gave me a lot to think about, so I gave it four stars. Next up this month, I read The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams, and I read this in an ebook. Now this is a romance book through and through, and it was absolutely adorable and wonderful and cute. Everything I needed right now in the world. It focuses on Gavin and Thea, who are the main characters, and they are married, and they have some stuff come up in their relationship where Gavin overreacts and Thea says, you know what, I want a divorce. And Gavin ha is a professional baseball player and he has a group of his guy friends who play on the team with him or who know him from professional sports and they invite him into this book club that they have formed where they read romance novels to help solve problems in their love lives. And this book club is supposed to help Gavin get Thea back and re-spark their love. And it is just such a cute second chance romance love story and so if that is your thing I highly highly recommend it it was very funny I gave it five stars it's a new all-time favorite for me I just loved it it was wonderful highly highly recommend next this month I read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and this is a classic novel it's about Joe Beth Amy and Meg March and their families their lives their sisterhood their adventures it was a five-star read for me and you can get all of my thoughts in the video that I posted about Little Women where I sing with Allie Haynes. So if you would like to know more of my thoughts on this, please check that video out. But overall, it was a great read. It was five stars. Next this month, I listened to the audiobook of Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This book is a memoir about Chanel who is previously known as Emily Doe, the victim of Brock Turner. She uses this book written by herself to reclaim her name and tell people who she is because for so long she went as Emily Doe in all of the press, in all of the papers, in even the court case. She never said her name or reclaimed it until this book and she uses this book to tell her side of the story, everything that happened to her and how it affected her life long term as well as bringing in some outside ideas about politics, about the Me Too movement in general, and about how her situation was handled by the people around her, by her friends, by her colleagues, by her boyfriend, and especially by her college that she attended and that Brock Turner attended. So overall, it was a four-star book for me. It was very well written, very interesting to read, very moving. It definitely made me cry a couple of times, and I think it's something that's necessary to read. Everyone should read this to get more information about the Me Too movement, what it means, what it means to victims and to people who have been affected by something like this. I don't like to place a rating on people's lives or on their stories when they're sharing it. So her story for me was a five star. It was very interesting, as I said. As a book, it was very long and very stretched out. And so that's the reason I gave it four stars in my official rating. But the story itself is very important and I highly recommend that you guys listen to the audiobook or go get the book so that you can read it and educate yourself on this movement and on the way women are affected in society today. Next I read The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves. This book is about Annika who struggles with some social anxiety, with understanding social cues, has trouble feeling normal and processing normal emotions. And it follows her relationship with her boyfriend Jonathan, both in the present where they are adults and they are rekindling their romance, and in the past when they fell in love for the first time at college together. It is a very interesting book with a very interesting premise and I ended up giving it three stars. I talk about my full feelings about this book in a video with Mackenzie King that I posted recently, so if you'd like to know more about this book or get more ideas about my feelings about it, please watch that video. Overall, it was pretty good. I wish there was more romance in it, and the twists and turns it took, I think, took me out of the story rather than added onto it, so this book was just kind of okay for me. 
Next, I read The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena, and I read this in an ebook. Now, this is a mystery thriller about Anne and Marco, who are a husband and wife, and it starts with them next door at a dinner party with their neighbors, and a tragedy strikes, and it throws Anne and Marco into a tailspin. It places them as main suspects of a criminal case. And it also follows Detective Rosbach as he sorts through everyone's lives, all of the lies that he's being told, and just is looking for the truth. I gave this book four stars. It was a great read, a quick read, tons of twists and turns, tons of plot twists that I didn't necessarily see coming and that were really, really interesting to me. I wanted to give it five stars. I really did because the ending was so satisfying to me and it was exactly what I wanted. It was everything. But the entire premise of the book is based on one of the characters doing something to like set all of this in motion that no person would ever do. It was so unrealistic to me that I couldn't give it five stars because I couldn't believe that it was possible that somebody would do stuff like that. So you might like it. I really, really enjoyed it and I do highly recommend it as long as you can get past the fact that it, some of the characters are so, so dumb and do things that nobody would do. No rational person would make those decisions. That's all I have to say about that. Next this month, I read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allier Science. This was an audiobook that was narrated by my man, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and it is an own voices, YA, LGBTQ, contemporary novel about Aristotle, also known as Ari, and Dante, who are both loners, both are kind of friendless at the beginning of the story, and they meet at the pool one day, they have nothing in common, but they both somehow form this perfect friendship together and it follows them as they discover things about themselves, as they make big life discoveries, as they grow up. I gave this book 4.5 stars. It was so cute and so good and I highly recommend it. Something I liked about this book is that the families are super fleshed out. All of the subplots, all of the secondary characters have an important role in the story and the writing is lyrical, it is sweet. It's definitely a book that everyone should read. Even though it's a young adult book, I definitely think that adults should read it. It sparks important discussions on race, sexuality, friendship, family, growing up, all of these things that are just so crucial to everyone. And I definitely think you should read this if you haven't already. Next up this month, I read Wicked For You by Shayla Black. This is an erotic romance novel and it focuses on Mystery, the main character, and Axel. And at the beginning of this book, Mystery is kidnapped by these unknown people and Axel is the man who comes in to save her. Then it flashes forward six years to where they are leading completely different lives and it focuses on their reunion and the romance that blossoms through their reunion and their shared memories and the continuing threat against mystery. So it has everything you want in a smutty romance novel. However, objectively, I think it could probably have used more backstory for the characters, more character development, and so in the end, I decided to give it three stars. It was very fun to read. It was a quick read for me. The writing was good. I just think that it could have used more character arc in the book. It could have used more backstory. It could have used more time to explore the ideas mentioned in the book. So three stars, pretty good book. Next up, I read Quiet Girl in a Noisy World, an introvert story by Debbie Tung. Now this book is a graphic novel about an introvert. It's this character right here. And it's a love story, a story of following an introvert through graduate school, through getting a job, through exploring adulthood, through marriage and life. I gave this book five stars. It's so relatable for me as an introvert. And in the book, the character takes a personality test and gets an INFJ, which is my Myers-Briggs type. So it definitely felt like I was reading about myself. The character Jason really reminded me of Brent and was just very reminiscent of our love story and all of the things he does for me in our lives. And so it was just a very refreshing, very quick, and very relatable read. So I gave this five stars and I would highly recommend it 
to anyone who is introverted and wants to read more about characters like them or anyone who is not introverted and wants to explore what being an introvert is like, maybe because their loved ones are, or maybe because they just can't fathom what being an introvert is like, this is a wonderful representation. Next this month, I listened to The Troop by Nick Cutter on an audiobook. This is a horror novel, and I'm not gonna give away too many spoilers, but it is a horror novel about Scoutmaster Tim and a troop of Boy Scouts who go out on a camping trip that's supposed to last for three days on this kind of remote island. This camping trip does not go the way they planned because a thin man who's very pale, very hungry, very clearly sick, stumbles onto their campsite and Scoutmaster Tim, who is a doctor, decides to help this man and ends up finding a terrifying, horrible thing beyond anybody's imagination and it throws their whole camping trip into a spiral. It creates a nightmare for the group that the troop has to fight for survival to escape. I gave this book five stars. It was so spooky. It made me cringe. It had so much like body horror that it was like, oh, and it made me literally make faces while driving or while walking and listening to this audiobook. It gave me chills. It was so fun to read. <laughs> that sounds crazy to say that reading a horror novel is fun, but it was because it was scary and it was gross and it had fully developed characters. Every single character was fully developed and it went back in time between the boys in the troop when they were younger, growing up, and kind of how they became the boys that they are now, um, as well as showing what's going on on the mainland where they are discovering what is happening to the boys on the island, and partially in the future where it talks about, oh, we did this and this is how this was solved, and so it definitely was very interesting to see like past, present, and future all kind of combining. It was written beautifully and I could not recommend it more. Stephen King blurred it, so if anyone's gonna be able to recommend a good horror novel to you, it is the king of horror himself. So I highly recommend that you pick this up. There are two scenes in the book that do show or describe animal violence, and both of them are done in a purposeful way. It is not done in a way, in my opinion, that is unnecessary or added on just to make you feel awful. It was done with a clear purpose and so I don't think that you should let that steer you away but if that is something that you are very sensitive to or really do not like reading about then maybe stay away from this one but it is such a good book otherwise that I do think you should check it out. The next book I read was If You Must Know by Jamie Beck. Now I read this on an ebook but I got it through Amazon First Reads, which if you haven't checked this out, you definitely should. Amazon Prime members every month get one free ebook downloaded from the Amazon First Reads program, and it is a newly published or not yet published book, and they offer choices from five or six different genres of books to choose from, and it gives you a short synopsis about the book so that you know a little bit about it going into it. And you get to download this book for free if you are a Prime member. So if you have Amazon Prime, I highly recommend that you check this out. At the beginning of every month, new books are posted and you get to choose one free one every month. So for this month, I chose If You Must Know. Now this is a fictional book with a hint of romance in it and it focuses on Amanda, who is the picture-perfect woman, picture-perfect wife. She cares a lot about rules and order and how everything looks. And then it focuses on her sister, Erin, who is kind of a bohemian style character, follows her heart more than her head, and really is a free spirit. I gave this book two stars, and I really wanted to enjoy it because I love sister stories, I love crime stories, I love stories where I can see myself as the character, and I definitely felt like I related to Amanda towards the beginning. But overall, the bo book is just boring. I just didn't, honestly, I didn't care about it. I skimmed most of the book, and nothing really gets resolved, and the things that do get resolved are unrealistic, and the whole premise of the book is unrealistic in my opinion, and some things are just never talked about. Like, there's a whole thing happening with the mom that is, like, never talked about, and all of a sudden a medium comes in at one point. It's very unrealistic, 
boring, forgettable. Those are the words that I can think to describe it. I would not recommend this. I ended this month on a high note reading Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This book is a very timely read because it is about a pandemic that sweeps over the world and it kills 99% of the population and it's called the Georgia flu. So it was definitely a very well-timed book to read, but it was so beautiful and made me think about so many things that it was, it felt perfect. It felt like it came to me at the perfect time because if I had read this book when it came out in 2014, I don't think that I would have connected to it the way that I have now that we are living through a pandemic. Now this book is about Kirsten Raymond who was a little girl at the time that the Georgia flu swept through the world killing 99% of the population. She survives it and it shows her life 20 years later as a full adult now living her life in this aftermath, in this post-apocalyptic world, and it shows how she is living her life. Now the way that she's living is as part of the Traveling Symphony, which is a group of people who travel around to all of the different surviving towns of people who have gathered after the pandemic, and they perform Shakespeare and other musical performances because there's an orchestra that travels with them. Now this book really spoke to me because I am an actress and theaters are shut down now and it really focuses on the ideas of is surviving enough or do we need to have something to live for to have art and beauty and all the things that make a life a life and it just really struck a chord with me. It was written so beautifully. It's almost like poetry. And I gave it five stars. I highly recommend it. I know some people say that it's boring or that they DNF'd it at 100 pages, but especially if, in the time we're living in right now, I think that it was so poignant and it was so inspirational to read about how these people were appreciating the things that they do have. And it made me think about all the things that I'm lucky to have in my life. It was so hard to put down. I highly recommend it. That completes the books that I read for May. If you guys have any questions or want to know more about the books that I read this month, please comment down below. I know this video will probably be a long one, so I probably won't have a whole lot of information about each book. So if you want to know more, please don't feel free to ask questions down in the comments below. That is all for me today, guys. I hope you guys are staying happy and safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, friends.